So I just finished reading this book recently that was called Drug Use for Adults. And the book talks about how this guy started out as someone who was always told that his community was ruined by drugs and that drugs were the problem, all of the crime, all of the homelessness, that was all because of drugs. And if you did drugs 100% of the time, you would end up just like them. All those people had a problem and their one and only problem was drugs. No other problems, just drugs. And so he really wanted to fight this and he went to school for it. He studied, he eventually got a job as a researcher and he was researching all of these different drugs. He would have patients come in, he would put out ads, I guess on Craigslist and things like that. I've seen them at bus stops and stuff personally, but heard them on the radio as well, now that I think about it, where they say, if you regularly smoke marijuana, sometimes they say, and don't intend to quit, come on down and we'll give you $50 a session or whatever it is. So he did that with not only marijuana, but also with crack, with heroin, with all different psychedelics. And what he found was the people who came oftentimes didn't have a problem per se. And in his research, he really, really tried to find the problem because in his mind, 100% there was a problem. But he started to notice this pattern. And this pattern was that in the actual research, he would find himself really grasping at straws and trying to like find maybe this means something and maybe there's like a little hint of maybe a problem over here. But for the most part, he realized that he was really extrapolating and he didn't really find in his research with provable, provable evidence that anything was really going wrong with people because of their drug problems. And that's because the people who were showing up to this were actually the people who had the least problems. Now, when you see the criminals and the homeless people, they are they have a drug problem, but that is really only because they have other mental problems as well. And that's what he was just starting to learn. And he said it was very, very hard for him to actually get that into his head because he was coming at everything through this one viewpoint that drugs are bad. And that's the only one viewpoint, which obviously there's government and conspiracies and stuff like that. But what it comes down to is you can't get funding unless you're proving that drugs are bad. And so every study is going to try to tell you that drugs are bad. If you want to get published in the biggest uh, journals, you're going to need to do that. You're going to need to show how your study proves something that is basically already known and like reproves it again. If you go out and you try to make a study that proves something else, or if your findings prove something else, you'll actually, you'll get no traction. And you might even get blackballed, you might lose your position, whatever job you're working, whatever uh, research department, whatever university you're working for, that could cost you your job if you say something against the narrative of drugs are bad, drugs are the problem, drugs are always the one and only problem. And so he saw all these patients all the time over and over, and they were reliable, they always showed up. They were honest, they didn't steal, they, he actually did this other test as well, where he would offer them money or the drug. So obviously if you think someone's completely an addict and you say, here's cocaine, small amount, or here's $5, they'll choose the cocaine. Okay, that's fair. Then you increase it to like $20 and all of a sudden people are choosing the money. Heroin addicts are choosing $20 over a little bit more heroin. And this whole concept of everything in your life always revolves around the drug when you're addicted to the drug was actually incorrect, is what he was finding. And so he eventually decided that he would try some of the drugs himself. And through the course of the book, he talks about all of the different drugs he's tried, crack, heroin, pretty much everything. And 
he says the side effects are not really that bad. And in all of his research, he really only saw that extreme addictions came in, I forget, it was a very small percentage, but it was only pretty much exclusively when there are other underlying mental health issues. And so the average healthy person, he's arguing, could use drugs, illegal drugs that we think are totally crazy, we as average people, you can use those drugs and it's no different from alcohol. So he was saying he would, you know, go out to an event where people are drinking and he would either take heroin before or he would, in his mind, just know, like, why should I not be able to do heroin when all these other people are drinking? It's equally bad. And, you know, he does this with a variety of drugs. Heroin is just probably the very most stigmatized and crack, which I'm pretty sure he's done crack as well. He actually talks about how crack and cocaine are exactly the same thing. Chemically, they're the same thing. It's just in a different form. And because he's also a African-American man, he says because crack is black, there's that association there, crack has much harsher penalties. It was something like 20 times harsher than cocaine because cocaine is considered to be a rich white drug and crack is a poor black drug. So basically that was his proof that like these are the exact same thing. It's just the government essentially lying to you and saying that some things are much more dangerous than others. And right now, the whole country is finally sort of acknowledging that you know, marijuana is not <laughs> dangerous, not nearly as dangerous as it's been said to be and as the government seems to think it is for no good reason. Obviously, he talks about a lot of psychedelics as well. What's interesting is the white psychedelic people that I know, white as in sort of his words, his stereotype, um, but across all races, of course, a lot of them fall under the category of what he calls psychonauts, which is basically, I'm taking this drug just so that I can explore other realms of consciousness. And he seems to think that they're sort of belittling people who use drugs for other reasons. He doesn't really believe in 100% of what the psychonauts are saying, that it's you know, connecting them with their spirituality in a way that can't be done any other way. And it's so much different from using drugs to get high. He's like, if I want to get high, there's nothing wrong with using drugs specifically just to get high. You don't have to use it to be a psychonaut. You don't have to use it to explore other realms of consciousness. People use alcohol just for fun. There shouldn't be a stigma that's different based on what you're using the drug for. And that's sort of another cal uh, classification that he was angry about as far as, you know, making it like a white psychonaut thing is okay. But using the exact same drug even in different doses as a black person is completely different and completely wrong. So he was pretty against that. He thinks that all drugs should just be treated equally, should be available to anyone. And that there should be just testing services. Make sure it is what you say it is. Another big one was he talks about um, fentanyl being, I think it's the number one killer right now of people like 18 to 35 or something like that. And the reason why it's killing so many people is because it's often sold as something else. Or the person buying it at least assumes it's something else. So it's very similar to heroin, he says. But heroin, you need a lot more of it compared to fentanyl um, in order to achieve the same results. And so it's very easy to overdose on fentanyl if you take a heroin-sized dose. And so he says it's basically the government basically scaring you and making it illegal, which is what causes all of the deaths in the first place, and basically lying about all of the drug education. So the government just tells you, like, you're going to die from everything the first time you use it, or you'll be addicted and be homeless 
and a criminal and go to jail or, you know. Basically, no good can ever come from drugs ever. And he's saying, okay, you can do drugs if you want. Anyone should be able to do drugs. Just have the information be actually, as long as you're not lying, people will actually understand and be able to weigh the consequences, which he says are very few, as long as there's no underlying existing mental condition or anything like that. He also says that the setting is very important for where you do drugs. The same drugs in a completely different setting will have completely different results. And a lot of this information is just not known because it's always done in secret by those who know about it. And the government seems to want to push all of this fake information. So just be open and honest, make it legal, um, make sure people know what they're getting and know what's going to happen to them, know exactly what's going on, make their decisions for themselves, and everyone will be fine. Stop stigmatizing drugs so much. And that was essentially the book. So if you're interested in that, I recommend you read it. Um, if you currently have any sort of huge negative perceptions about any drugs, um, if you think people who smoke crack are 100% of the time um, stupid and homeless, it'd be a good read because uh, it'll probably change your point of view on that.